Yeah, yeah, we can see you. We can hear you. Oh, okay, yeah, there we are. Okay. Yeah, how's it going, guys? Good to see you. Um, yeah, these dockets are something, eh? Yeah, um, they're interesting for sure, yeah. man. Confidentiality, like, why? What the fuck? It doesn't really make yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, anyway, this was actually posted on your uh, Reddit there, PP, mm. earlier today. It's from about ten days ago. Mm-hmm. It's actually a link from the Sears subreddit with uh, credit to you, Sir Kenmore. Okay. Um, so oh, yeah, just a little bit of background. Yeah. Yeah, so just a bit of a background here um, about the whole Lazard connection. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of, you know, I actually wrote a bunch of notes here and kind of, kind of, kind of, um, yeah, if I can encapsulate this, uh, the nature of this Lazard connection anyway. So, anyway, stock at 345 from uh, previous. So, it's speculated that Ryan Cohen never sold his shares on the public market, as we talked about. He transferred them to the investment bank Lazard Frères to be managed as part of Bed Bath Beyond restructuring. Lazard has been utilized to carry out leveraged buyout transactions um, previously for Icon's takeover of Hewlett Packard and Xerox mm-hmm. by working with Carol Flatten of Alex Partners, who sits right. on the board of Bed Bath Beyond. Yes. During uh, Chapter 11 proceedings, it's revealed that Lazard was uh, retained for sales transactions, restructuring August 10th. Lazard entered uh-huh. into an indemnification letter, which enabled Lazard to buy, sell, underwrite, place purchase of any securities. Um, in financing or otherwise placement agency or purchase agreement and do anything they want to with these shares they received on August 18th that Cohen, you think, sold to them. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so this docket revealed Lazard and Bed Bath Beyond had an engagement letter and also a dealer manager, manager agreement dated August 18th. A dealer manager agreement governs the relationship between Bed Bath Beyond and the investors and is signed by the parties to the commencement of a debt tender offer, a signature move by ICON to acquire companies. So, mm-hmm. if this is all true, okay, well, it's in the docket. So, um, so anyway, today we had docket 676 come out, um, which states basically Lazard Fairs just got court approval for their engagement letter uh, with Bed Bath Beyond to carry out a fi- financial transaction and got this approval two days before the stocking horse deadline. So, if this deal with Lazard is approved, so I'm kind of thinking maybe this deal is already done, and the stocking horse might be a distraction, like we've seen with other things like reverse split and uh, a whole bunch of other things, right? Uh, so I think this whole stocking horse thing was just a big case of misdirection, possibly, right? Yeah. So, so now we're going to take a, a turn into the tinfoil here. Okay. Okay. So, so with all that background talked about already. Let's just talk about another movie here, like we talked about the other day with uh, the other guys. <clears throat> this one's uh, Silence of the Lambs, though. <clears throat> oh, so, okay. I love that movie. <laughs> yeah, everybody does. So I remember that scene with Buffalo Bill, uh-huh. the, the notorious scene where he's got, got the wig on, his dick tucked between his legs, he's dancing like a weirdo. Yeah. Everybody remembers that scene? Okay, mm-hmm. so it's Buffalo Bill. So if you Google slang, like Buffalo slang, just go Google search buffalo slang what does buffalo mean uh-huh. it basically means to outwit confuse deceive intimidate or baffle so buffalo bill who's a bill that we know bill Polte. what's he doing he's outwitting confusing deceiving and not maybe not intimidating so much but we're all baffled by by his tweets and everything right. he's saying in code and stuff like that right uh-huh so, so anyway buffalo bill there's that crazy scene from silence of the lamps so what's the, what's the song that's playing during that scene? Does anybody remember? Uh, it's called Goodbye it's Horses. A, yeah, Goodbye Horses. Yeah, okay, yeah. and the and the band or the singer, the singer's name um, during, uh, for that song is Q Lazarus. So this is kind of a kind of maybe uh, maybe reaching a little bit, but uh-huh. Lazarus Lazard, yeah. um, right? So Goodbye Horses, maybe Goodbye Stocking Horse. Mm. Um, Q, that's interesting. That's some fucking tinfoil, man. Q, for sure. E B B Y Q, right? So Q Lazarus. Mm-hmm. Not only that, but imagine Q spelled C U E. So Q Lazarus. We're going to Q Lazarus right now. And the band is called Q Lazarus and the Resurrection. So what's going to get resurrected here? Right? The Bath Beyond we all thought was dead, but it's going to come back to life. <laughs> so <laughs> this is some crazy hardcore tinfoil. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so let's go through the lyrics of this song. This, these lyrics are pretty telling, too. 
Um, so we'll just start here. So the, the first verse, basically, I'm, I'm, I think it's kind of like a back and forth of bull and bear thesis of this stock over the last year or so. <clears throat> right? So it starts out like this. He told me, I see you rise, but it always falls. I see you come. I see you go. You'd say all things pass into the night. And I say, oh, no, sir, I must say you're wrong. I must disagree. Oh, no, sir. I must say you're wrong. Won't you listen to me? Then the next verse is kind of fun. He told me I've seen it all before. I've been there. I've seen my hopes and dreams lying on the ground. I've seen the sky just begin to fall. Right? The MSM tried to tell us the sky was falling all the time. It was all over. Yeah. He say all things pass into the night. <clears throat> and then the second part of this second verse, kind of uh, where we're fighting back, right? And I say, oh, no, sir, I must say you're wrong. I must disagree. Oh, no, sir, I must say you're wrong. Will you listen to me? Mm. So this is where we are now. <clears throat> We've, uh, we're fighting back, right, against the FUD. And uh, so here's, here's where we are now, and here's the final verse. Goodbye, horses, I'm flying over you. Goodbye, uh-huh. horses. I'm flying over you. Goodbye, horses. I'm flying over you. Goodbye, horses. I'm flying, 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 flying over you. Hmm. And that's the end of the song. So in that last verse, the word flying comes up seven times. It the line repeats itself four times in that one verse. So seven four one. Smudge, I'm gonna fucking reach out and kiss you. <laughs> That's some fucking tinfoil, man, for sure. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Anyway, uh, it's uh, it's a crazy connection, but you know, I have this song stuck in my head for the last few days, and um, I I was I was honestly, you know, I, I thought it was maybe a nothing burger until this docket came out today, and I was thinking, you know what, this this whole stock universe thing could have been a distraction from the from the beginning, like everything else was, just to keep everybody guessing and misdirected. Interesting. And what if what if Carl Icahn already owns. 75 or 74.1 percent of the float and the deal's done and uh lazar just got just gave or just got court approval with for the engagement letter to carry out this final financial transaction yeah so yeah it's, it's crazy man it's freaking nuts but here's here's a couple other things um my last paycheck I just got yesterday had 741 in the in the total after taxes <laughs> hey. and uh the last sale hearing date is on my birthday june 27th wow. when i turn when i turn 47 <laughs> nice man <laughs> like jesus christ man it's, it's like living crazy. in the goddamn matrix <laughs> smudge uh, t- uh tell me man how many shares do you have what cost basis is it again i have twenty five thousand shares at 31 cents cost basis excellent man that sounds fantastic thanks yeah nice. and i i just picked up some gme i've got uh, 97 shares of gme i'm waiting for some cash to settle to get the last three shares just because i like round numbers i have a cd <laughs> right on yeah man cool. yeah, yeah. Once you get once you get 100 man sell a call on it you know yeah. it makes yeah. some, some premium yeah you know that, that's yeah. what i've been doing is, is yeah. accruing the 100 share positions and then and then selling a call against it you know i know yeah it's i don't know like, just bugs me when i have like an odd number yeah for sure he's doing like, that now so, yeah so can yeah, i go I back to your, your, your very TV show you know uh, ajla taught me about the wheel and um and selling nice. covered calls dude you know so i mean the yeah. TV show is making us all fucking smarter Oh, cool. for sure. Yeah, no, I know. Well, you're, you're, you're bearish, you know. You're going to get smarter watching the BP show. Which is Absolutely, Pete. No, for sure. That's, that's 100% true. I agree with yeah. that, man. You know what? We all have different life experiences. We all kind of dig deep in our own due diligence in a different way. And together as a community, it just fucking layers and stack. And uh, we're here. Absolutely. Boys. Yeah, yeah, it's a great way to yeah, crowdsource yeah. information. Yeah, it sure. is. It is. Yep. It's exactly. crowdsourced information. What, what That's a beautiful the best way, to put way to say it, too. Right. And even if this yeah. day doesn't work out, I mean, we know a lot more about the market than we did at the beginning of this fucking thing. Oh, oh for God. sure. You know what? But I, you know what, Pete? I, I, I think this this play has all the earmarks of something big that is going to make I history. You, you I know what I mean? I completely agree. It's, it's, yeah. it's like yeah. Hertz. It's like uh, American Airlines. It's about any of these things that have. Yeah, uh, that, you know, I, I think it's I think something big is going to happen. I do. I think so. Sure. That's why I'm still holding well, I, I, even, you know, after all the FUD, all the mainstream media telling us sell, sell, sell. You know, that's why I'm still holding is because. This oh, is, yeah. It, it's, yeah. It, it's well, the telegraph, it's they're, 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 they're telegraph no. it by, by pushing all this FUD, right? Like, I mean, why, why do you want us to sell? Why, why are you so desperate? 
you know, their their desperation their desperation reeks of um, fear, you know. And um, you know, if if we just hold and not give into the fear and believe in our thesis, you know, I mean, we, we have we have we have like RC, we have Polte, we have lots of good guys in positions of power. And I'm not talk, just talking about Bed Bath Beyond. I mean, the way the world's going right now, things are going sideways in a big hurry for um in a lot of different ways. You know, I won't get into it, you know, just uh, just not be political and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, this uh this is gonna be I, I think there's bigger forces at work here than just the work. If cool. you know what I mean. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I agree, agree with you. We've talked um, much, much about here ab- on here about a melt up before a meltdown. And yeah, we're starting know. to see some reports about that we're in a bull market now as well. With, yeah, uh, fuck, fuck that, dude. I mean that but that <laughs> goes to the that goes, <laughs> we're in the melt that up. goes to the but, melt but up there's to always, the meltdown thesis now. So yeah, yeah, there's always a little bit of a pump before the dump because you need to bring on the retail investors in order to take away their money. Yeah, you need oh, to yeah. have liquidity. Oh, for sure. Right. So these you know, these gains and gonna see are just a unreal, manipulated. unsustainable. It's going to be manipulated. Look at spy today. You're already starting to oh. see a climb. Right. Spy, spy is right. hardcore right. manipulating. I, I, I think the right. spy I, just uh, controls the economy. I, there's I no way I would buy it. All right, let, let's hear it, Travis. I, I, I need to go back to Smudge's very first point mm-hmm. on um, it, the transaction you said with, with, with Lazard. Um, can you go back to that real quick and touch base on that? Because I think you said something that ABC and Thule and some other people worked late at night after I went to bed one night to find out that – I, I think you said something that, that was discovered to be not true. It, I don't think there was a post about it in the subreddit or what anything else. Okay. But can you go back to your first point one more time? Yeah, the first point here. So, so, so this is from Docket yeah. 345. So we're talking about where it's speculated to the RSC never sold, sold his shares to the public market. He transferred them to this investment bank, Lazard Ferris, to be managed as part of BBY's restructuring. Okay. Um, Lazard has been utilized to carry out a leveraged buyout transaction. Um, for Icon's takeover of Hewlett Packard and Xerox in the past by working with Carol Flatten of Alex Partners, who now sits on the board of Bed Bath Beyond. During Chapter 11 proceedings, it was revealed that Lazard was retained for sales transactions and restructuring. Is correct mm-hmm. so far? Um. Well, yes and no. Uh, did you get this from Edwin Barnes' post? Uh, well, the, the, I, I, Edwin Barnes, I'm a huge fan of it. Edwin Barnes was tagged in this it, post, but this was actually a post by you, Sir Kenmore. I'm sure he got a lot of his stuff from uh-huh. Edwin Barnes' post, though. And, and and to that, I would say that I think ABC, Thule, and a bunch of us looked into that. And on PitchBook, it said that he sold to an undisclosed buyer. Right. But on his 13F or 13D, 13D, yeah. um, it said he sold on the open market. He did sell on the open market, though? Is that, well, is that for there was, there was Fish says they were not of, sold at open. Okay, so, so maybe, wait, maybe we don't know for sure either way. Right, but it, it, it says in this there is in conclusion here. Yeah, uh, and, and I don't want to, you know, burst your bubble. No, it's all good. Means whatsoever. I mean, we're going after dark. Let's have some fun. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, like I do want to be realistic. Well, yeah, that, let's debate it. You know, his 13D said he he sold all of his shares on the open market. PitchBook said he sold to an undisclosed buyer, and there is this discrepancy in the two sources, and so. I just want to. I'm an accountant. I'm all about full disclosure. Yeah, absolutely. I just want to put it out there that hey, th- this is inconclusive at the moment, and and I do love Edwin Barnsey and and you know other theories about how this is drawn together. But at the same time, I'm I, I'm always apprehensive, and I used to be an auditor in a past life, and it's like you know find the truth. Oh, for sure. And, and, yeah. And, and the information. So yeah, um, you know, it's, it's at the it's, moment that's inconclusive. Yeah, right? for sure. It's, um, it's I think it's that Lazard. Sorry. No, yeah. No, I, I think that Lazard could possibly have been in play since Ryan Cohen sold. You know, basically, maybe you know he acquired his stake, right? He, he, and um, sold his stake, you know, for the profit, but at the same time retained Lazard to facilitate well, the deal. Well, there you was know, some. Because I, I think said Lazarus. That. Yes, that's what I'm saying. I agree with you. <laughs> well, there that was, was my post. There was stuff in the <laughs> right. document. That's, 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 that. that's what I'm saying. You know, I think that's. I think that's the most likely scenario that that took place. Mm. No, I, I I hope that that's the most likely scenario. But his 13D said he sold on the open market, right. which I agree is, with you, there. you know, that part made me question. Oh, was my DD correct? And 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 again, it's inconclusive. But I I love where it gets tinfoily and. And I hope that the 13D, maybe he sold on the open market to 
a you know a, a selective buyer, well, which you can do at market price. I mean that that's yeah. you know maybe yeah. he had to sell because of uh, Gustavo and because of yeah. the lawsuit, you know, and you know he had to basically take a hands off position and and retain Lazard to and do it through an intermediary because well, yeah, I, I, I think La well, Lazard was retained all, August tenth. Lazard was retained August 10th by Bed Bath Beyond. Uh, Ryan Cohen sold, I believe, August 17th and 18th. Mm -hmm. and, and, and my post was about, you know, normally you shake hands. All right, do this. Retain an outside firm. Once they're retained, I'll sell my shares. We can do this at an arm's length transaction, which is a very, you know, I know, uh, clean cut accounting term. Um, but that way he's now independent and you can carry out a transaction in the future because he's independent. He has nothing to do with this, and it can be carried out at arm's length where and, he's an independent person. And, and I mean, I'm here for the tinfoil. I, I hope that it, it went down where he did sell to a undisclosed buyer, but his 13D right. set otherwise, which makes me question, okay, why did he put that instead of sell on the open market to a undisclosed buyer yeah yeah i think that was could be more smoke and mirrors maybe but i mean if, you know i mean is that pretty is that pretty set in stone the 13d the 13d like there's no way no back door way around that i think so no that's not set in yeah. stone it, it, i mean you can sell on the open market to an undisclosed buyer and not necessarily mm -hmm. disclose that you sold it on the open market at market price and you had an inter intermediary party Mm -hmm. carry out that transaction and sell to an undisclosed buyer that is possible okay yeah. that is All right. and, and the other thing guys is we have to consider we also know that he also had 3.9 million in order to make the standstill and the board changes right so we know he had right. additional exactly. shares as well yeah. well he probably bought in uh personally because that would explain why his own name is instead of it being rc ventures it's right. ryan cohen then he and, wouldn't have to disclose yeah and imagine mm, yeah, yeah good point Lazar yeah. too i mean he could have a a really, you know, a decent amount of shares or, or pop position here. But right. again, the 3.9 million doesn't go over the 4.5% rule, right? So that was kind of hidden in terms of the, the sh yeah. shareholder discussion. And that's I right. And then, th 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 yeah. And then what happened after that ABC? Um, uh, didn't Bay Bath Bay Beyond do share buybacks to increase his percentage of holding? Yeah, yeah. He went from yeah. a 9.8 to 11.82, right? That was because of right, and that took him over what the ten percent or something. Yeah, eleven point eight to three hundred sixty-five. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that's where and that's where things kind of went off the rails for a bit, I think. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. and that's why he had to make his disclosure uh, all of a sudden, where he hadn't in the past. You don't need to make a disclosure until you have over ten percent. They bought back three hundred sixty-five thousand shares. That took him over the limit. Yeah. He then had to make his disclosure, even though the Lazard deal was done. Mm -hmm five weeks or i'm sorry five days prior um now he has to make a disclosure when he has every intention to sell but the sec required him make the disclosure he did that right. the interesting thing is and i found this the most interesting he did his this first disclosure electronically and then mailed in his sell order hmm. via certified mail i found that interesting i buy I, some time I, yeah no, he absolutely did. He knew what he was doing. Now, why do it? Though? Yeah, he was he, he was familiar with the cycle. Maybe. And yeah. that's where I think we need to know the true definition of open market because it could have been sold to the Lazarus. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. uh, real quick, uh, Smudge, uh, Smudge the Cat, we're going to go and move on to our next guest, man. Uh, anything you want to say? There's 430 people here tonight. Absolute DGENs here on a Friday night at the PP show. Uh, <laughs> let them know what you think they need to know at home, man. Now's the time to do it. Well, you know what? We're all, I think there's going to be a big wealth transfer here somewhere down the line. And a lot of people are going to have money that they never had before. So, um, you know what, the, the world's crashing and burning all around us, <laughs> you know, not trying to be a downer or anything, but you know, help, help people who, who need help and uh, take care of the people you love. And uh, don't just spend it all on Lambos and hookers and blow and stuff. All right. So, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Where's the fun in that? Cool. Yeah. Save, <laughs> save stuff for people who need it. All right. Yeah. Um, uh, Why not do it all? 
Yeah, do it all for sure. <laughs> right. I mean, we're we're after dark tonight. Let's have some fun. Yeah, That's man. right. Enjoy the beer, dark, man. Sure. You know, obviously something's happening. Uh, Slobo here says, "Click yeah. that like for PP." Appreciate the love, man. Uh, Smudge the cat. We loved having you on, man. Thanks for supporting the show. Thanks for coming on and explaining some of that. Uh, Anytime, guys. Uh, PP, MVP, Pete, Travis, all you guys rock. Cool. Um, yeah, I watch every night and. Um, have a good night. I have to go to sleep. I got to get up early in the morning for work. So. All right. Right on, man. Good luck. And uh, let's get some love in the chat for uh, your the last first day of work, Smudge. Yeah. Have a good night. Yeah. Let's hope. Thanks a lot, guys. Again. All right. Take sure. care, man. You too. Thanks. All right. You heard it from Smudge the Cat, man. We loved hearing from him, man. Uh, Amos 